Hello everyone, my name is Daniel, and uh, I'm part of this organization called Decentral Budapest, and I'll be talking about liquid democracy, which is the uh, highlight of, of uh, decentralization because it's, it's about the centralization of power. Uh, let, me start with a, well, let me start with a very quick history. Uh, where democracy is coming from. So it's in around the uh, 6th uh, century BC, the uh, Greeks had a lot of uh, oligarchic and uh, tyrannic systems. And at that point, uh, some ruler called uh, Cleisthenes, and then later Pericles, we find it, came up with this idea that why don't we let the people decide about uh, the things in the city? Because uh, Greece was about city-states, so each city-state governed itself. And this, they came up with this crazy idea that, that uh, nothing's working, why don't we just let the people decide? So they, they came, they used to come out to a hill close to the uh, city, outside the city, and then they, they raised issues, they had discussions, and then they voted by, uh, by hand. Um, that was around 6,000 people deciding on things. And this is where the word comes from, because demos means the people, and kratos means rule strength. So democracy is the rule of the people. And polit the word politics comes from the, the word polis, governing the city issues. Um, so that was what we today call direct democracy. It's called direct because people uh, discuss directly and they vote directly on things. They express their direct opinion. Uh, it's a good thing because they could all uh, have, have their uh, uh, words heard, but uh, obviously it becomes a problem if we start having uh, cities of uh, millions of people or uh, megapolises that we have now, like New York. The, no one would come up with a crazy idea to scale this that you would gather on, on close to the city and design and things. Um, plus, also, we have so many issues, so it's not just uh, yeah, we could do online votes for New York, but there's so many issues that how can someone, you know, um, keep uh, uh, thinking about all the issues and make informed decisions. That's why we came up with this uh, wonderful idea of representative democracy, when we every four years uh, we, we vote on elect elected representatives who will represent our opinion. So. Supposedly, we send these people into this building called, called Parliament, and uh, so instead of gathering on a hill, they gather in this building and they discuss things and vote on things. And uh, if there is really some some deep issue, occasionally we have a referendum. Uh, that means that every citizen can express their opinion by a vote. But this is very occasional because it's, it's very very costly to, to make a referendum and have like in Hungary 10 million people vote. Uh, so what is this given us? Uh, this kind of system actually scales to any size uh, because any amount of people can elect two or three hundred people in this room and they can govern the issues, but it's cost efficient compared to everyone dealing with all the issues. But it has a big drawback that we don't have a direct say anymore in things. They do it for us. But, you know, uh, these are people that we elected so we elect the right kind of people that we want to represent us. So everything is supposed to be fine, right? So everyone lived happily ever after. Well, <laughs> probably not. Uh, and that, if you, if you listen on the, to the word of the street, you basically you hear things like this. And no matter who I vote for, it just doesn't seem to benefit me. It's just, uh, I try voting this and that, and it's, uh, it's uh, like always uh, awful. Or they say that they can't pick a candidate, they, they, they dislike all of them, and they have to pick the one that they dislike the least. Uh, that's very usual. And then they, uh, they uh, say that uh, the election, during the election, there are all these promises, but then uh, when they elected, when they get, once they get elected, uh, all those promises seem to be, you know, disappear, and they just do something that they they think they they should be doing. Uh, and actually, we had a workshop just a few days ago where uh, people came together to 
um, talk about why do we hate politics. And uh, on this workshop, we asked them to list the top uh, things, top issues why they, this, why they hate politics. And uh, they had this uh, list, and these were the top items on the list. Uh, first was corruption and lobby, lobby power, which they defined as legal cor legalized corruption, basically, when money decides uh, who gets in. They said no accountability, <laughs> that they can do whatever, and they feel powerless to do anything, but they, they can't make them accountable. They said no understanding, that uh, politicians doesn't understand the issues, they say. That's not what I'm saying, that's what on the workshop around, uh, like, uh, um, 30 or 40 people were saying, collecting, and uh, they said no personal relationship. They don't have a personal relationship with that representative, and that they, they found that it's a problem. And they said limited real options to choose from. Uh, that means that they have a list of candidates to choose from, but uh, none of them they really want, and they, none of them really differ. Some some say. Um, so what then? Uh, one guy even went as far as, as putting this on the list. Is democracy the problem? So they wanted to discuss that. Is, is democracy itself is broken? Uh, and this is a very good question. I, when you go home, I actually want you to think about this. Uh, is democracy the problem? Or I give you an alternative. Is representative democracy the problem? So what causes us the frustration? Democracy itself, or, or, uh, yeah, you will have different opinions on this, I'm sure. Uh, what I want you to add, uh, think about is, am I unhappy about the current system? Because I think the majority of the people are stupid and make stupid decisions. Is this your idea? Because then democracy is probably not your choice. Or ask yourself if. Is my problem that that the people are not being represented well in the parliament building? So uh, is that that's, uh, the case that uh, these people who we send there are not representing the population well? So uh, if you choose between these two, you will uh, decide on which one is the problem for you, democracy or the representative nature of democracy. Also, uh, please think about an ideal democracy situation uh, what if we could have an ideal democracy where it doesn't cost much, you don't have to spend time with it, but things would happen just like in, in ancient Greece, that uh, everyone's opinion would be heard. Right? Uh, you can think about an oracle solution. Kind of. Imagine there is an oracle who knows everyone's wish, and uh, it, it, with each issue, the oracle reads the minds, and. Uh, Makes, makes a choice based on what the majority wants, and that's what happens. And that would be an ideal democracy, because democracy is about the will of the majority. So even if you are in the minority and your, your will is not represented, the majority decided, so it's a good democracy. So uh, does this... Uh, Uh, what I would like to show you is how representative democracy uh, damages this ideal democracy. So I'd like to show you how much we are not having an ideal democracy, so that you can decide uh, if an ideal democracy would work for you. I'll show you this entry problem, uh, aka, you can call it fragmentation. Imagine these groups all having uh, um, a will of saying no to something, and this uh, yellow group is saying yes to the same thing. Uh, in Hungary, you have this uh, limit of 5% to get into the parliament. So if you have a party that has 4.5% of the votes, they will not get into the parliament building, they cannot send a single person in there to, to represent anyone. So if this in a chart happens, then the parliament will decide yes even though you can see that there is much more nose there. Uh, this, is, this is caused by uh, this limit of entry, and this limit is necessary because we are sending in 200 people to represent 10 million people. We cannot send all 10 million in, so we have to reduce it, and that's what happens, for example. Um, 
what, what parties do in this case is they start forming coalitions. So all the smaller guys has to start forming a bigger coalition to, to overrule the, the yellow group. But what's the problem with that? The problem is that they are different groups because they have different opinions on other things. You see, so, so they're not completely agreeing on things. Uh, they are being forced to, to have a coalition Okay, so, so they might not be able to form coalitions because of a differing opinion on other issues. And, um, and even if they did, they are being forced to form this coalition because they really, really want to say no to something. It's a very important issue that they want to say no to. So they are forced into this bigger coalition. Um, what happens then? Happens the second problem, which I call the lack of choice problem, which is these artificially formed coalitions uh, become a few choices which you can choose from. And uh, you end up with the situation that I wanted to have a uh, representative, but he probably have fallen out of the race because of these other groups have, uh, you know, um, synthesized him into this uh, bigger coalition where he doesn't have his voice. Or, uh, well actually, the lack of choice problem can result uh, much easier than that because there's probably no single party or person who can represent your, uh, your choice uh, fully, even if there is no coalition for me. But why would that be? It would be because, it would be because there is this single choice problem that for the next four years, there will be millions of issues to decide upon and you have to go to this uh, ballot box and uh, choose a candidate from a couple and uh, you're giving this candidate a uh, uh, the ability to choose a million uh, votes for you. But, but uh, how can you be sure that uh, you find someone who, who, who is exactly thinking the way you would think in like four million issues. It's impossible. Uh, you could just, uh, you know, uh, get the one who's closest to you, but there will be still probably differing in like three million issues, is his opinion. So this gets back to the uh, lack of choice problem, uh, like I said at the, at the end. So the other problem is loss of control. This is also caused by just the representative system. Uh, I, I go there every four years, I vote, but between, the, between these uh, elections, I just give up all the control that I have. I don't have a session every week with this, uh, with this uh, representative, this politician, to tell him how I think about this next issue. He doesn't really care at that point. Or, or maybe he pretends he cares. Um, or send some, some uh, consultation letter to you. Um, but, uh, but you don't have that option to, to give a feedback to him what your opinion is now, uh, so he can uh, uh, aggregate this to his decision. And it allows these representatives to not keep promises. The election turns into a promise race. So basically, uh, at election year, before the election for a few months, everyone promises everything. Uh, they do stuff so get, they get elected, but at that point they are kind of have a uh, guaranteed position in the parliament for four years. Uh, at the next uh, cycle, they will probably start again, uh, you know, hyping up things. And but this is just uh, the nature of the. Uh, 
you, you cannot blame them basically because this is what the nature of the representative electoral system is. Uh, cause is also uh, unpunished corruption. So, so there is a corruption deal that you find out about the middle of the election the cycle. There's not much you can do. Yes, you can protest, you can go out to the streets, but uh, what is it that you can do if, if this politician turns out to be a you know, very uh, corrupt one? So, uh, here, comes the, here comes the solution. It's called liquid democracy. Uh, imagine this system. I will, uh, I will uh, show it to you in uh, what the rules, rules are just now uh, in a, a very abstract way. So what if, first, what if you could pick anyone to be your representative? Anyone in the room, anyone who you know? Let's call him a delegate. He will be your delegate. Because you're, delega you're delegating your, your will, your uh, wishes to, to this person. Uh, delegation becomes transitive. So you can delegate to someone and that person can delegate further to another person. You can have multiple delegates for different types of issues. So you could say, I delegate to this guy on uh, environmental issues because he's really an environmentalist and I like his opinion on those issues. And I delegate my other kind of uh, topics, issues uh, to this different person. Uh, your delegation can be changed any time. That means you're not satisfied with some, some uh, delegation that you have. Uh, you just set it to a different delegate. Or the fifth rule, uh, yeah, it didn't fit on the screen, I'm sorry. Your delegation can be re revoked any time. That means you can make a direct vote, just like in Greece. You're not satisfied with something, uh, you, the, the person you, you delegate to is not doing what he, sh he, in your opinion, should be doing. You're re revoking your delegation and you vote directly on the issue, or on, or, or, on all issues from that point on. Uh, I'll show you an example because it's, a, it's a, uh, really easy to grasp the concept through an example. Um, this will be an example of Peter who is sitting at home using a, uh, a liquid democracy system to express his opinion. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so if you don't agree with Peter, please don't laugh on his decisions. Uh, it's just really an example to, to show that what he could do if he wanted to. Uh, he might be stupid for thinking this way, but anyways, what he's doing now is he is splitting his uh, delega delegations because on foreign policy, he really likes uh, Viktor Orban. Uh, the Fidesz party's uh, opinion, and uh, he is kind of afraid of uh, this migrant crisis, so, so he really wants bigger fans so, and stuff like that. But on, on the social benefits issues, uh, he really likes this uh, Ferenc Jurchen thinking, and he wants to raise unemployment uh, benefits and stuff like that. Uh, now he's splitting his delegation uh, to different people. Uh, imagine this, he cannot do this right now. He has to pick one of the two right now, and uh, he doesn't like half of this guy's policy, and he doesn't like half of that guy's policy, and he's being forced to pick between the two. In this system, he can express his will completely. He wants foreign policy decided by Viktor Orban and social benefits by Ferenc Jurchen. Also, he knows this uh, neighbor, Paul, who he finds a really good economist. He, he thinks uh, Paul is uh, really good in these things. So he wants to delegate his decision on economic issues to this guy. He rather trusts his guy because he knows this guy. He knows Paul and he knows he's trustable. Before, he had to choose someone who he didn't really know, not even second hand. Uh, since he didn't know the guy, he had to rely on paid uh, advertisements and stuff, you know, which could be biased uh, occasionally. Uh, but this guy, Paul, he knows personally for, for 10 years now. So he, he is much more comfortable to delegating Paul. And uh, Paul is actually not that expert on everything, so he further delegates energy, is, energy issues to this uh, scientist he knows, um, because he's very smart. And the transportation issues he delegates to this other guy who's a green activist, because he wants lots of bicycle roads, 
and he uh, he knows Robert is, is, is really for bicycle roads. So uh, imagine this situation. Peter is basically uh, delegating different kind of issues to different people, and uh, he's very happy. Now imagine at some point, uh, Victor Orban is uh, there is a new issue coming up. Victor Orban raises if we should be uh, part of the EU or not, and it's really a very important issue. And uh, let's say Victor Orban says something that uh, Peter doesn't like, and he, Victor Orban votes on this, and uh, Peter is shocked. So what he can do at this point is he uh, just goes into this liquid democratic system that he has on his computer and revokes this delegation immediately as soon as he learns that Victor Orban is thinking about this way. And uh, he has different options now. He could uh, change this delegation of foreign policy to someone, someone else. Or now is because it's really an important issue. He wants to cast a direct vote. So uh, he places a direct vote on this issue in particular. Uh, he can revoke a uh, delegation from Viktor Orban for the future, absolutely, if he is uh, so dissatisfied. But he can leave all the delegation on Orban Victor, the rest, and he's just revoking this this certain issue. He can do both with the system. Uh, probably uh, you have a feeling now that uh, what, uh, how, how liquid democracy works. So why is it called liquid? It's called liquid because the, fr the, the votes flow like a, like a river from source to the ocean and it's getting thicker and thicker. So it's also called proxy voting or delegated voting system that uh, anyone in this system who has a lot of people delegating to, his votes are worth more votes. So if I have 10 people in my building who is delegating to me, then when I cast my vote on an issue, it's worth 11, 11 votes, uh, what I vote. So this is why it gets thicker and thicker, and probably pe people like Viktor Orban will have hundreds of thousands of billions of, of votes delegated to him, uh, but uh, other smaller person uh, can have a uh, couple of votes or, or um, uh, you know, and it's also liquid for another reason. It's liquid in the sense of economic uh, usage of the word liquid, because um, uh, we say a market is liquid when you can move in and out uh, easily um, into positions. And it is liquid because any point that you dislike something, you just go into your system and you change your settings. You're not delegating to that person anymore, you, you, you're dissatisfied. So it's absolutely liquid. This system uh, of liquid democracy uh, has these features. It has a free entry and an equal playing field. Imagine that um, since blogs came around uh, on the internet, and now um, a guy who's just sitting at his basement can become a news agent. He can start posting blog posts, and if people like that, and he's giving them information and fun facts, uh, people will subscribe to him and then he will become like an uh, influence. And uh, before, we could only rely on like uh, appointed media channels. And this really changed, internet changed this. Uh, imagine this same thing happening for, for, for power. Anyone in the basement has a good opinion, people start liking his opinion, people start delegating to this person, and this person becomes a politician, basically. Uh, not that he wanted to, but his, his, he, his opinion will be magnified by 100 or 100,000 people uh, so he can uh, vote in their name. It gives you full control. Like I said, you can revoke anything. The biggest problem of people has is a frustration that they are not capable of doing, not doing anything. They don't want to go to the street and yell uh, and, you know, light cars or something. <laughs> they, they really want to do something about it and they, they don't have much option right now. In this system, I mean, they just go home and they change the setting of their preferences and delegations. Uh, I'll, I'll leave it to a homework to see that this liquid democracy system doesn't have any of the problems that I, I, uh, I uh, listed. Doesn't have the entry problem, entry is free. Doesn't have the lack of choice problem. You have unlimited choice. You can choose your neighbor, your, uh, anyone. Uh, doesn't have the single choice problem. You don't have to collapse your uh, choices of a million issues into one choice at the election year. You can express, if you have time enough, you can express each and every uh, a different opinion on each and every issue or delegate certain groups with your 
your uh, wish. You don't have loss of control. You have full control all the time. You're not losing in between elections. You don't have loss of personal contact because if you don't like politicians and you don't like the issue that you don't personally know the person you will delegating, you will not choose politicians. You will only choose people you know personally. In this system, a vote is never lost. You're not forced to do tactical voting because usually it's like, yeah, I, I, I cannot vote, I shouldn't vote on this uh, third candidate because uh, then, then my vote is not going to be counted and this other guy will get in. Uh, so this kind of uh, tactics uh, actually damaging the democratic uh, uh, decision. Uh, in, the, in this system, you just let your wish flow and, and through, through the delegation system, it will end up in the ocean of the decision, uh, for sure. I show compatibility. Now, the reason I'm, I'm really uh, safely can assure everyone that it is a better system than what we have now, because it is fully compatible with the current system. So if uh, um, old Mary wants to uh, have everything like it is now, so she doesn't want change, uh, we can fully implement the representative democracy that we have right now by her, let's say she voted the Fidesz and likes Viktor Orban, uh, she can delegate every issue to Viktor Orban for the next four years. She can set this up, uh, let the system roll and not touch it. Uh, the result will be the same as we have right now. Uh, this other guy who, who really likes, he has a lot of time, uh, he's uh, probably unemployed, and he wants to deal with every issue. He has a strong opinion on every issue. He will not delegate anywhere. He will always uh, read about the issue and make a direct vote. So it's almost like in ancient Greece. He will always be represented, his voice will always be heard. And liquid democracy is essentially a liquid slider between these two. So at any point, you can slide this to the uh, left end to be direct, or to the right end to be representative, or somewhere between. Uh, well, uh, it's compatible with both systems. So it's uh, really easy to convince someone, someone to go with this system because what he wants can be implemented on, uh, on this system. Uh, also, it's uh, compatible with other systems. Like there is one proposal from, from uh, groups of uh, who, who like ancient Hungarian systems that is called this 10 units that uh, when 10 people in a local neighborhood should come together, elect one person, uh, in each locality, and then those those uh, are called corporals, and the corporals uh, come in ten groups, and they they elect one person a captain, and um, so that it's a uh, power is building up from bottom up, which are ten groups, groups of ten people, and that's when um, at the top there is a leader of the nation. So uh, there are some um, people who want this kind of system. It can be implemented with uh, simple liquid democracy. <coughs> they will delegate to the corporals, the corporals will delegate further to the captains, uh, and so forth. Okay, so let's see some implementation issues. Let, uh, how, how, how can we build this? Um, uh, well, you cannot do this with pencil and paper for sure. It's too complex for that. So you have to do it online. You need some kind of a social network structure uh, where you have a uh, uh, connections between people set up and uh, what you would do is on this network currently information flows you send messages and you have discussions so let power flow on this network just like messages flow now so uh, you, you, you allow delegations to be set up uh, it's, it's, it's almost like an electric network if you can if you look at an electric network you can flow uh, power on it as well as information Actually, uh, Google implemented this uh, completely with democratic system. They call it Google Boards. And it's actually working really well. It's a bit ironic that uh, they use it only internally. They don't give a public API for us to use it. And they use it for deciding if uh, they should have pizza or pasta for the evening meal at the, when they were great, stuff like that. Uh, it was implemented in the 20% time where they can do freely whatever they want. Um, 
Yeah, but it's really good. You can look it up on the internet and uh, how it works and uh, how successful was it with, with them. Okay, so what kind of issues we, we are facing when we want to implement this? Uh, we have to, uh, because the thing is, we don't want to have, if you want to do it in big uh, for a government, we don't want to uh, let Google decide the votes. So there's a famous saying that uh, uh, was said, uh, those who cast the votes decide nothing, those who cast the votes decide everything. This was said by Joseph Stalin. Uh, and uh, he, was, he was probably right. Uh, so we, I cannot imagine any third company that we would trust in counting the votes or even moderating the discussion. So it's, it's just as uh, you know, bad if you let someone to decide what can be said and, and what is not uh, politically correct or anything. Um, so all these issues that I raised, Confirming identities, who can vote, who should vote, who get the voting rights. Uh, raising the issues, how, re how issues get formed, what should we discuss, what should we not discuss. The whole discussion process itself, then the voting uh, process, and then how the voting results in a decision. Uh, it's, these are not trivial problems, they, they're all very difficult. Just forming a decision from the votes is, is uh, very complex because uh, before I, I showed you yes or no votes, but what if there are uh, you know a bunch of um, alternatives and you have to pick one that the majority likes, but they, they have all different preferences. Uh, uh, these all raise uh, further more issues, uh, raising issues. Uh, who has the right to raise an issue? How do we how do we you know? Uh, what's the taxonomy of issues? I just I just show you hashtags that uh, you know foreign policy. Is this a foreign policy issue or is this a uh, economical issue? It could be debated. Uh, it could belong to both. Uh, when we have a discussion, who will moderate? What is the scope of the discussion? Should it be discussed at the local community level? Is it a global thing? Is it uh, who is concerned in this uh, discussion? Uh, then with voting, uh, can, how can we securely and anonymously uh, vote? Uh, in an auditable fashion, so that everyone can see that there is no cheating. Obviously, if we cannot do that, I mean, we shouldn't even start doing this because uh, it will be abused. Uh, and decision forming, like I said, uh, uh, raises a lot of issues. Uh, from all of these issues, uh, this voting issue is what uh, blockchain can uh, really help us with. Because currently, we have electronic voting systems, and people really dislike them. There is no, no universally accepted system. Actually, Germany in 2009 uh, banned electronic voting altogether because it cannot be made uh, uh, safe. So it, it's just, even if, even if the software is written well, when you push that button, you don't really know what happens on this computer. You cannot know what version of the software is running on there, if they replaced it in the last minute or so. Uh, even if, even if the uh, algorithms work and could give you a good uh, voting mechanism, still they are so complex that even if you're a mathematician, you have to read through uh, pages and pages to make sure that is this really a secure way? So how do we want to uh, convince others to use this system if, for a mathematician, it takes a couple of days or weeks uh, to to make sure that this is good? How do regular people will believe that it works good? And this. Uh, um, voting systems are geared toward voting on a certain issue and not uh, built for this kind of delegation. Um, and here comes uh, Bitcoin voting to the rescue. Imagine that uh, what is blockchain is. Blockchain is nothing else than a distributed database which works on a consensus system. So um, not, not all people grasp the idea of, of Bitcoin fully. Uh, because at the core of Bitcoin is basically just this distributed database. It's a way to synchronize data among nodes. And consensus means if uh, more than half of the nodes think that this is the current state of the database, then there is consensus on that. And those who, who are saying the minority opinion, the minority report, those are falling out of the system. So if one of these computers get hacked or has a problem or not running the right version, showing uh, uh, not the right state, that uh, computer is fall, falls out of the system. And it's very difficult to hack more than half, half of the uh, participating systems in a uh, 
uh, computer system. So uh, blockchain is actually a secure and anonymous, but it's pseudonymous, as you know. So everything is visible and auditable, but you don't see names, but you only see IDs. So uh, you can check the results are added up correctly. Uh, if you know your ID, you can see that your vote is uh, uh, correctly accounted for, because you know your ID, and you will see it on the blockchain. Blockchain is an auditable, uh, unchangeable database where you will see the, uh, your vote. And uh, since it's, uh, this coin mechanism is really, uh, imagine your vote coin that you are being issued, uh, that you can spend on this issue, and uh, you can spend, you can send this coin to someone who you delegate to. So this whole, so this whole architecture of the blockchain and uh, Bitcoin is really suited very well to this kind of thing. So, so this is why it will uh, change uh, the possibilities that we can implement uh, liquid democracy. Uh, the issue we have to solve is, although is a very important one, how can we ensure the correct token distribution that everyone who is allowed should vote get exactly one token to vote uh, while we are preserving his anonymity. So he has to come somewhere, prove he's a Hungarian citizen, and then he should get a uh, ID that he can vote with. But uh, someone who issued that uh, voting token to this person now knows what he will be voting on. So there needs to be a, a bit of complex uh, procedure how we separate this issuing of this uh, voting token, um, it's, it's a, a bit like in, in Tor, if you know the Tor system, that uh, the way they hide on the Tor system is there is a different person who knows who's accessing the web page from the person who, who knows what web page is being accessed. So by relaying the request to a couple nodes, uh, they separate these two informations and no one has a full picture. Similar thing happening right now. Some entity will confirm the identity and another entity will issue the voting token and if we can assure that these two entities don't talk to each other, no one will know where my vote gone and I will be able to check uh, if my vote is accounted for correctly. Uh, so that was it. If you want further information on this, how it works, I recommend this system, uh, these uh, links for you. Uh, Follow My Vote is a system that is currently being developed. It's a liquid democracy system built on top of a blockchain. I think they right now choose the BitShares blockchain, but they could. Uh, this can be implemented on any, any blockchain. Uh, it's just a blockchain technology that you need. The second link is a, uh, a Hungarian project which uh, uh, targets the issue of uh, uh, serving anonymous digital identities, the toughest problem in this uh, uh, <laughs> liquid democracy thing. The third one is liquid feedback, you can check it. The, the pirate parties around Europe use the liquid feedback system. Actually, there is this party called the pirate party, and I, I really don't like pirates myself, but uh, uh, some of the things they say are, are really nice and, and neat. And, uh, um, for example, what they do is once they're in the parliament, they have this liquid uh, feedback system for their internal issues. So they completely open and uh, parties issues can be discussed uh, fully openly. Also you can check Google Votes, which is a full-fledged liquid democracy system, although it's centralized, and we want a decentralized one. Check the Debian constitution to see how the groups uh, form, how can they uh, self-manage themselves, it's a very good example. And this central Budapest is us. Uh, we are currently building a, such a system for smaller communities. So we don't want, we, we don't want uh, this to be implemented for, for a nation because it's a too big uh, of a, a jump right now. But uh, we can do this for a chess club, a local community, uh, and it would work very well. And people would see how good this uh, kind of self-governmental system is. So that's what we are building now, and if you have any questions or uh, further, you can contact us and we are happy to uh, give you uh, direction. So that was it.